so we're going to review the notes on light meter from yesterday. What you should have in your notes currently, and stop me if you don't have this information. We started out with a definition of what light meter is. Okay? And we talked about the fact that it's a tool in your camera that helps you determine the settings. I'm going to get rid of this part. Okay. Then we talked about how to activate the light meter. And we said that in your camera, you have to push down the shutter speed halfway. And when you do that, you will see the light meter appear in your camera. And we talked about the fact that in the Vivitars, the way the light meter appears, this is the film camera we're using. It's over on the right-hand side. You'll see a plus, a minus, or a green circle. The green circle is telling you that you have enough light. Middle is good. Did you guys actually write down middle is good yesterday because I felt like I didn't ask you to do that and I want you to remember that. You want to be in the middle. So no matter what type of camera you use, the light meter might appear in a different location or look slightly different, but the one thing that is consistent with all of the cameras, middle is good. Did we talk about these two things as affecting your light meter? Available light and how light and dark your subject matter is? Okay, so let's get this in your notes. What happened yesterday in class is we took the film cameras and I set up two different scenarios for you. I had you take a meter reading on a light subject and I had you take a meter reading on a dark subject, right? And what I was trying to get at there was that depending on whether your subject is lighter or darker, your light meter is going to tell you different settings. So you guys are going to bobblehead for me for a second. Did you process yesterday? Did it click in your brain yesterday that when you were taking a reading on a dark subject, your camera was giving you lower number settings to let more light in the camera? Can I have a bobblehead if that clicked for you yesterday? Because if it didn't, I want to review that. Bobbleheads? Anything? Some bobbles? Some blank stares? Bobbles. Okay. So, the reverse was true. When you were taking a reading on a light subject, you had higher numbers because your camera didn't need to let as much light in. That's important. We're going to come back to that. Yesterday when we were doing that activity, so everybody look at the board for a minute. Yesterday when we were doing that activity, the variable, the thing that we changed in our two experiments was how light or dark the subject was. The thing that we kept the same was the available light. You guys were all in this classroom, indoors, with the lights on. You were all working with the same available or ambient, okay, photo term I'll throw back at you later. You were all working with the same ambient light, the same available light. If we were outside doing that experiment, if some of you were in shadows and some of you were in sunlight, there would be no constant. You'd all be in different lighting circumstances. So the two things that impact your light meter, the reading that you get on the light meter, is available light and how light or dark your subject is. And then based on that, you change your f-stop and shutter speed. Did I say a lot of things that are confusing or does that make sense? We all have that language in, yeah? Help me out. Participatory sport. Yeah? We're good? Okay. Did I tell you this? Did I tell you to be careful that just because you have the right amount of light coming into your camera doesn't mean it's a good picture? If you remember yesterday, there were some settings we had that were really low. It was like F3.4 and a shutter speed of 1. And that was enough light coming in your camera, but it wasn't going to be a good picture. Because without a tripod, that setting would have been a blur. 
And with an f-stop of 3.4, you would have had a really shallow depth of field. Just because you have the correct light coming into your camera does not mean it's going to be a good picture. It's just going to be a well-exposed picture. Can I scroll? Did I go too far? So what you need to remember to combat that, every time you set your light meter, or you, you set make your settings for your light meter to be average, after you've changed your f-stop and shutter speed, and your light meter is like, yeah, you got enough light, green circle, woo, go back and look at your settings. What did you have to change your f-stop and shutter speed to in order to get that green circle? And if the numbers are too low, and you don't have a tripod, don't take the picture. Don't waste the frame of film. Best ringtone ever. Okay. Set your light meter, check your settings, decide if it's worth taking the picture. Yesterday we talked about what the light meter looks like in the film camera, in the Vivitar that we're going to be using. I wanted to talk about what it looks like in the digital SLRs that we're going to be using. So in the film camera, the light meter was only visible through the viewfinder. On the digital SLRs that we're using, it will also be visible through the, oh, I took the battery out. Um, yeah, thank you. On the digital SLR that we're using, it's going to be visible in the viewfinder, but also on the LCD screen. And what it'll look like, thank you. It'll be visible on the bottom of the viewfinder and on the bottom of the screen. I don't know if you guys can see this right here. Nope, not really working too well. Um, it's still a sliding scale. Minus to plus. A circle in the center. And ultimate, and then there's like a series of dots in between a progressive scale. And then underneath that scale, you're going to see a second set of dashes. I'll make it a different color, even though it doesn't exist as a different color in your camera. You'll see a second set of dashes. Ultimately, you want one dash lining up right underneath that circle. If your picture is too dark, you may see a sequence of dashes leading towards the dark. Or if your picture is too light, you may see it. Oh. Or if the picture is too light, you may see a sequence of dashes heading that way. Ultimately, what you want is just one under the center. So when we go to work with the digital cameras, that's what we're going to be looking for. Questions? <laughs>